Hello guys, it's me, Wim, from uh, Cactolt here. Uh, and I just decided to make a video about the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So, uh, actually in this video I'm just going to explore this a little bit and give uh, my opinion or something, I guess. <laughs> so it's literally just me checking out the Fortnite Editor and uh, uh, telling uh, whatever comes to mind about this. So let's see, Unreal Editor for Fortnite. It unlocks the power of Unreal Editor for creators to publish new and diverse experiences in Fortnite. Use the link to uh, the right to join our developers community and get started in UEFN. Your first hour in UEFN, first documentation. So apparently they got first right now. And I know that in the Unreal community, a lot of people have been asking about some kind of a new script uh, besides C++ and Blueprints, basically, that they could code in. Uh, and first seems to be a simplified version of uh, scripting. So perhaps that's uh, also promising to us, our engine developers that are not making games inside of Fortnite. Uh, but let's see, actually, what do we have here? UENF documentation, where does this bring us? What is this? Wow, it looks great. I mean, it looks nicer than our documentation for Unreal Engine. And by that, I mean the Unreal Engine official documentation. So that's great. So it, it does look like you actually need to learn how to program with first. I'm curious if uh, blueprinting is a thing here. So I want to figure out, is blueprinting still a thing? Because I can't find anything about that directly. I'm also curious about how can you make money with this? So um, do you have to actually upload to Fortnite all the time? Like, I mean, do you have to publish this? I, I can imagine you can only publish this in Fortnite, right? Like you cannot make a separate game that you release on the Epic Game Store or on Steam, I'm assuming. So if that's the case, if you can only do it in Fortnite, then you can probably only uh, make money with like Fortnite, uh, like that they can support you as a creator inside of Fortnite, I believe. But what do we have here? So it's called Island Templates, and then we have Feature Examples. So we have a first detonation template. That's pretty cool. Where our team arms a bomb. Oh, so it's like defuse the bomb from Counter-Strike. And then we have first elimination template, first device starter, first parkour template. That's interesting because we sell a parkour template. And I actually saw that, uh, where did I see it? I saw that in the code that they used on the YouTube video, it said like parkour race. That's literally how we call our project. So that's pretty funny. Uh, we sell that on the marketplace, by the way. And then we have animation 101. Okay. Then we have island templates here, so you can create an island and then start your own game in that. And uh, that's pretty much it. And we have my projects, I, which I don't have yet. So let's start by uh, having a simple island or uh, actually oh, tilted towers, guys. Tilted towers are back. That's very nice. Let's start with a little uh, lake hub. No. Survival Island. Okay, let's call this uh, my, uh, oh, can't do space, of course, Fortnite tests. Let's create this. And yeah, just what features are actually in this? How much is this Unreal Engine is what I'm wondering. And uh, we'll figure that out together. So let's see here. Creating project My Fortnite test. Revision control. Ah. So it seems, and uh, as they showed in their uh, tech demos, everything that you do here can literally in real time be played and tested by uh, by the gamers. So that's pretty interesting. So if you are a, a now new Fortnite editor uh, developer, you can probably make stuff and uh, have your friends play that in real time. Because I saw in the in the video that they made, you can literally just drag in a, a mesh or an asset and it will actually show up in the world. So regarding replication and all that stuff, this is, this is like next level. This is uh, Roblox on steroids essentially. So what do we have here already? We got my Fortnite test content, game feature data, my Fortnite test, that's my level. And then we have consumables. What is this? Everything seems to be uh, data files like this. So let, let us this, uh, let's see, consumables, devices, environment. Uh, yeah, it still looks like this is all pretty complicated. I'm not sure if this is uh, kid friendly, it looks like you still need to have some understanding, well, at least of the of the Unreal Editor interface, of course. And what do we have here? Galleries, gray box, lighting materials, meshes. Which meshes do we have here? Uh, it's not really a big collection, huh? Okay, interesting. And what about props? Castle. 
Oh, here comes all the interesting stuff. So here we have like all of the Fortnite props. Uh, we're extremely zoomed out, so let's uh, zoom into the island a little bit. Boom, whoa. So here we are actually in Fortnite in Unreal Engine 5, where this is, I believe, a 5.2 more. But this is looking pretty cool. I'm not sure it looks laggy on my uh, on my left screen when I do the recording. I hope it is not that laggy for you guys. Let's see. I'm going to pause the recording and check this out. Okay, guys. So I'm back again. So uh, yeah, apparently this Fortnite editor takes up uh, so much performance, even on a good computer like mine. I got a 3070 Supreme X. Uh, so um, yeah, apparently uh, if you if you move around, your GPU will shoot up to like 100%, CPU 45%. So if you want to record in this editor, I recommend putting it to low. Uh, when I do that, you'll see uh, the performance automatically improves. So uh, yeah, well, that's the first thing that we saw about this uh, editor here. So uh, what else do we see here? Well, uh, so yeah, it looks very ugly now because it's on low settings, but that's fine. So uh, what happens if I click on uh, this? This is first. So yeah, first we'll open Visual Studio Code where you will actually have to uh, code in this new uh, first language. I'm assuming it looks a lot like uh, uh, either C++ or something simple like JavaScript. And now what do we have here? Open a session in order to play the game. So you can launch a session. It says a phone there. Uh, launch on this PC, connect to the platform. On launch tells another device or client logged in with the same account as editor to join the session. So that's very interesting. So if I am uh, connected on my Xbox or uh, some other device, a laptop, where I have Fortnite running, then I can actually, uh, uh, when that is logged in with the account, I can l launch a session there essentially and still have my editor here. And then here I will launch a client on the local machine here and uh, live edit. So send support changes to level mate in editor to connect session. Yeah, so if I drag in meshes and this is on, they will live see it. And here we have on play, we'll enter game mode at start of Pi. So what happens if we just simply click launch session? Let's see. So we have a lot of revision control going on here. Check in changes, okay. And then will Fortnite play now? Okay, it says session loading. Oh, here we go. This is cool stuff. I mean, I've always wanted to see Fortnite behind the scenes kind of in Unreal Editor. And here you can, you really have the chance to do that. You can really inspect all of the assets and uh, just see uh, uh, the secrets about Fortnite kind of. We get some, can get some more insights on how Epic Games handles everything themselves behind the scenes. Uh, for example, you can already see their naming convention stuff here. Okay, here we go. We are launching into the game. Connecting. Well, I just drop out of the sky because I have not seen a player start yet. Let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, here it says, uh, collaborate with friends and collaborators on multiple platforms, create new games using UE, uh, UEFN and Verse, use the power of Unreal Editor in Fortnite. It would have been cool if I could use blueprints in this. Perhaps they're working on that, but it looks like currently that's not an option. Uh, I'll check that out a little bit more to see if I'm wrong, but here we go. And, and I'm loaded in with actually my character for my account here. So this is now my Fortnite over here. Um, and edit mode is on, which means I could live drag in a character here, I'm assuming. So let's check this out. Can I emote? Oh, I can build. Look, now you guys can uh, see all of my epic building skills. This is kind of how I build in Fortnite, but that's besides the point. Let's uh, get this away and see if we can uh, edit something. So where could I locate myself? I was on some kind of a beach, right? I've built a little bit. I can't see that uh, apparently. Oh, there I am. Look, I'm actually over here in the distance. <laughs> this is so cool. So this is actually where I am because I just built this, but I don't see my character. But I do see here the character spawner. So what do they call this? Player spawner, fourth player start creative. So whatever I have just built is actually over here. Now if we pull up the content browser, then uh, let's drag in some kind of an asset like this one. And uh, 
90 snapping is a bit much. Oh, I prefer 10 snapping. So like this, okay, that's great. Look, now I, I'm already learning things. Apparently this asset has the anchor point over here. That for me as a game developer, that's already interesting. Because, well, you know what that means? If I drag these assets in and this is the anchor point over here, they have most likely done this to work in some kind of a grid matter. So I'm not sure why this is on four. I've never seen a grid size of four. These grid sizes are all, uh, they're all even numbers. So so that's already interesting. We see that Fortnite only works with even numbers in their grid, which I myself actually prefer. It's actually a system that we actually used in our own game as well. So you can put it to 64 and easily drag out another one. And then the reason that they do it like this is because, well, if you look at the bigger skill, you'll most likely get like a, a little kind of Minecraft grid. Um, and if you work like this with anchor points uh, like this you can actually uh, add whole numbers like this even numbers you can uh, more easily uh, uh, get nice coordinates and such for your game well that that's how we use it not sure if that's how they intended here but um, let's see can we actually see these assets happening here in real time let's get back to the game yeah there they are oh my god that's so cool so it gets a bit slow now i hope this is not going to crash on us no now i can click and here i am so those are the assets that i just put in and they're here in runtime. How cool is that? Even my friends could now play this and check this out. Okay, let's continue with all of the possibilities here. So first of all, yeah, we have access to every single asset it looks like in all of Fortnite, all the props. We also have all of the sounds. Um, and yeah, what are these game sounds, modulation, ingredients, your different kinds of sound cues. What if we open these sound cues up? This is read only. Okay, so it's a read only sound cue, so we cannot edit these. So how would we now make gameplay in here? Oh, and we can even load in weapons. So are these uh, interactable weapons? Let's see if they are. Let's drag in an assault rifle over here. And let's drag in uh, this epic hammer over here. Let's get back to the game. Oh my God, look how cool this is. <laughs> so here's the hammer. I can actually interact with it. Oh, this is a hammer spawner blueprint apparently. So now it spawned the hammer. For every 10 seconds it will spawn a hammer, okay. What about this guy? Hello? Okay, not sure. Oh. Time before first spawn, 10 and 10. Okay. Can I pick up this weapon now? Okay, so I, I'm not sure how I can pick this up, but uh, it looks like this maybe in an actual session it will spawn your weapons. Not sure. Okay, so uh, I want to close the game actually. This one, how can we close it? Because I don't see that option. Here, return to lobby. Yes. Okay, let's uh, right click and close it like this. Okay, there we go. So what can we do here? Epic, materials, functions. So we have a lot of materials here. These are also interesting, but can we check these out? They're all read only. So we can actually not open up any of these and get to the real bottom and the real secret of all of these epic materials and all of these useful functions. Everything is read only apparently. So how does one actually create a game with this then? Since every single asset is read only, how could I edit this into some kind of cool gameplay project? Mm -hmm. Well, at least you can do all of the modeling, landscaping. It actually, to me right now, as the first feeling uh, of how this works, I and uh, keep in mind, this is literally my first time opening this. I'm not sure how this works, but for me, it feels like you can actually only do the artist side of things. Making a game, yeah, you can code it in verse, uh, but literally like, I don't understand verse right now. I'm a blueprint programmer. What happens if I click this? And what is this? Okay, so, and everything is, is dumbed down a little bit. Look, volumes, there's missing a ton of volumes here. Visual effects, missing a ton. Shapes, got the basic shapes. 
So they really dumped it down a whole bunch, which makes sense, of course. And then what does this give us? This gives us Visual Studio. It opens up with Verse in here. Uh, so yeah. So uh, well, it looks cool on the first uh, side, but now it already looks like this is actually pretty complicated. Like you have to be a programmer in order to use this kind of. Um, it's not that like uh, anyone can now suddenly make Fortnite games, it looks like. So uh, let me know if I'm wrong, but that's my first uh, look at this actually. How did we get to more of the stuff that they showed us? News perhaps, yeah, here. So your first hour in UEFN, what do they tell us here? Let's check this out real quick before I finish up this video. Ready to start creating amazing games and experiences, dive in to learn. Watch your learn. Create a basic project and map, get to know the user interface, add custom content, play test your experience. For me, it literally feels like you can only add custom content, like either code with first or just uh, basically meshes and props, kind of. Introduction to this, that's great. The editor, working with content, play testing, landscape tools, modeling tools. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna just sum this video up. You can basically only drag in uh, nice cosmetic uh, things. So that's uh, what I mean with that is you can add your own props to this stuff. They also showed how you can have uh, the, the, the mega scans uh, uh, stuff in here. So you can have all the epic assets that don't look like these assets. You can have assets that are highly realistic and build your own Fortnite game in that. And how do you actually make a game in this? Well, looks like you're going to have to become a first coder to do that so that's my first look at this guys uh, let me know if you're excited about this or if uh, you also are like what the hell am i going to do with this and um, yeah i'll see you guys in the next video okay bye bye have a good one like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video bye